Uh, yeah, so my name is Stephen, called Stephen Ross Tene. I'm from Topo Noetia uh, College, which is in Topo. Um, and I'm just going to talk today about a game called Little Big Planet. So I'm going to talk about the whakapapa of the game um, and what it's about and how it can be used for coding and creativity. Might just need to get a clicker. I think this might be it. Is that clicker working? Nope. Piers, have we got a different clicker? Okay, cool. All right, so yeah, um, the, the tagline for Little Big Planet is create, play, share. And so I've tried to use some TDL um, up the top there. There are my contact details, my PlayStation network name, Twitter, my email. And if you want to follow the slideshow, uh, it's a Google slide. I'll just leave that there for a wee moment. So we'll talk about the whakapapa. We'll talk about what, what create, play, and share means in this game. And then we're going to switch to the PlayStation 4. I'm going to need a volunteer from the audience at that point. So if you're familiar with the PS4 controller, um, start getting ready. You can come up soon to help me with that. Um, sadly, there's no audio in the, with the PlayStation 4, just a video. So we'll just talk our way through that. And I'll get you to help me create a bit of gameplay with some logic involved. Are we happy to move on from that slide? OK. Uh, so this is the whakapapa of Little Big Planet. 2008, the PS3 was released around the world. And Little Big Planet came out at the time. It was just called Little Big Planet then. There wasn't a one, two, or three. Made by a company called Media Molecule, who uh, are just based south of London. Um, and it was a really interesting game because there were a bunch of levels you could play. And as you played them, you, get, you gathered assets, which you could then use to create your own levels. And so it had a gameplay part, and then it had a create mode part. And in the create mode, you got to use those assets to make games and then publish them. And anyone else who had Little Big Planet could come along and play not just the story mode, but also user-created stuff from around the world. Then in 2011, Little Big Planet 2 came out, also for the PS3, but they added a whole bunch of new tools and extra logic. Because in the first one, the logic was pretty crude. There were no counters or timers. They had to use sort of moving pistons with a sensor that knew when it was close, and that was a really primitive timer. So in the next one, Little Big Planet 2, there's a whole bunch of extra logic tools. And then just uh, three years ago, Little Big Planet 3 came out for PS3 and 4. And even more tools and gameplay, um, they extended a whole bunch of features and still with that tagline, create, play, share. There are other versions. PS Portable uh, it was a really pared down version. It's on the PS Vita. There's a karting game where you can make actual racing tracks, uh, include logic on that. Um, and those are, that's on PS3. So the play part of Little Big Planet is about creating story mode, no matter which one you play. There are prize bubbles around the game. You collect those. Um, and the games are designed, the levels are designed in a way that you can see what is possible with create mode. So some of them might be top down. Some might be side scroller. Some of them you control a vehicle. Um, there's RPG elements. And you can play by yourself. You can play locally with up to four people. Or you can play across the world with up, up to four people. And they all appear in the game with you. In the create mode, you jump into what's called the moon, where all your levels are saved. And all the assets you've gathered can be then used. So you can build physical structures. Um, you can add logic and instructions so that when you know, events happen, they can cause an outcome. There's a, there's a music composition system in there. So there's a whole bunch of little synthesized sound um, segments that you can put together and overlap and tweak. Um, you can introduce a point system if you want. Uh, there's an in-game currency system you could use. Um, this little guide in the corner is called Sack Thing. This is the main character. In the first game, it was called Sack Boy. But as time went on, he became a bit more genderless. And now it's just Sack Thing. And you can completely customize that character with costume pieces. There's downloadable content if you want it. And you can animate those characters too. So you're, you're, if you make a game, somebody could be playing, and suddenly an event happens, you can animate them to look afraid or scared, jump in a certain way, whatever. You can create videos. So there's, you don't create a game. You might just create an entire animated scene. And so somebody downloads that and plays it, and they just watch as a movie. Um, you can control lighting. It, it's really diverse. When it comes to sharing, um, you publish it with a really simple few button clicks. Um, and then it goes online and appears on your Earth. And your Earth is visible to all the other people who have this game. Your moon is your private space for where your levels are made. So you can visit other people's Earth, see all their levels, jump in and play them. And they all have an online leaderboard of some sort. So if you've introduced points in your game, it shows you around the world 
different players and how they've scored on your level. You can add a, there's a feedback system, so you can add reviews. Um, you can vote um, with a happy face or a sad face, which I think was a bit like one of the blocky um, systems we saw the other day with Rachel, if you went to that session. And you can also communicate in-game. You could use a text-based system if you're with them live to talk. You can use a microphone. You can leave a message on their earth. So there's a lot of ways to connect. So this is how create mode works. You've got essentially a, a four or five types of assets. Materials uh, are grouped into categories like wood, plastic, and so on. And they all have their own physical properties. So plastics are quite shiny. Metal is very dense. Glasses are uh, very low friction. Um, sponge is grabbable. Rubber is high friction. You can tweak all of those things if you want. Those are the default settings. And essentially, you choose a material, choose a brush shape, and then you draw with that material. And that becomes an object that you can actually stand on and walk on and interact with in the game. There are these pre-made 3D objects like boots and pumpkins and bits of fruit and things from the kitchen that you can just add a bit of whimsy so they become objects. You can interact with them too, jump over them. Decorations are a kind of a um, 3D object with absolutely no collision. So they're just there to make things look pretty. And they might be flowers or leaves or um, animated things that you can kind of stick onto the materials and the 3D objects and, and give it a certain theme. Stickers are like decals. They, they, they appear on the screen. You can wrap them around an object, and they can change the color, the texture, add a bit of detail. There are pre-made music items if you want to compose music. And there are complete um, soundtracks available as well that you can use. So the coding part, which we're going to show you in a moment with a volunteer, so keep thinking about that. Uh, it's just a visual drag and drop system. So all of, the, all of the logic and coding is represented by little icons. You scroll through the menu, select it, it then appears in the game, and you can slap it onto a material or an object. And then it begins to act on that object. So sensors can do things like detect how near a player is. And the sensor has a radius which you can scale. When the player enters that radius, it sends out a signal. And you can then connect that signal to some other object, and it will activate that object, or open a door, or change a light, or whatever. Um, you can set materials so that when they're touched, if the player collides with them, they send out a signal, whether something has been grabbed or not. Um, whether there's a tag. A tag is like a little marker you might put on an object. And when that tag gets near something else, it triggers an event. And then there's a bunch of operation gates. So AND gates take in a bunch of signals. And if they're all present, it sends out an output. OR gates. You can have a whole bunch of inputs. If only one of them is triggered, it sends out a signal. XOR is like an AND, but it only allows one signal at a time. So if a whole bunch of signals are present, it doesn't send out a signal until all of them but one are, are missing. And then there's a NOT gate. So that takes a signal and reverses it. And those form the basis of all kinds of computing systems around the world. Uh, there's also timers and counters. There's a randomizer, which will send an output that just randomly turns on and off. Uh, there's a waveform generator, so if you want to generate some kind of sinusoidal motion. Um, digital switches, which will flick between a bunch of states. And then different materials and objects can be tweaked. So you might make them static, so they're frozen. They don't, absolutely don't have any physics apart from um, being stationary. Or you could make them grabbable, make, them, make their opacity more transparent or opaque. Change friction, weight, density. So there's a real good bunch of inbuilt physics available as well. It's got a really big community. It's been going for nearly 10 years. So these are just a bunch of forums. Those are links that you can click. Um, you can join a forum, talk about how to create a level. There might be a problem you're trying to solve. Somebody else has already solved that. You can ask for their advice. You can share screenshots and get feedback. What do you think of this? Is my theme any good? Um, there's there's a, a couple of official Twitter and Facebook accounts. And every week, one of the community managers will choose a newish level, and then it becomes level of the week on Little Big Planet, and it's a bit like what I also saw on Scratch and Blockly and so on, where there's always something that someone's made that's being um, publicized. There's a level of the day, which is a daily kind of promotion of a cool level, kind of prestigious to get those. And I asked a few people on Twitter, I opened this open question, what have you learned playing Little Big Planet? And so these are some things people said, and these are people from a whole range of ages, um, places around the world, Some more. So some of these are kids still at school. 
Some of these are adults. Um, on the previous screen, there was a woman who's a grandmother in Denmark. She gets into this. And last one here. This guy down the bottom is from Turkey. So it's pretty powerful stuff. So I'll talk to you about how that might work in pedagogy. And there's a blog up here, Adam Renard, he's in America. He tried this with um, a primary school. He managed to get hold of two PlayStation 3s and one Vita, and he had groups of three. It was outside of normal school teaching time. And he has a blog you can read through about how that worked for him and what he tried and what didn't work. Um, you could set challenges. Because it's so physics-based, you could ask the students to come up with some kind of device that does something. And on some of the forums, there have been competitions where you've got to make a machine that will scale a wall um, without using any kind of um, sensor input. Once it goes, it's just got to do that job. You know, things like that. You could have groups in a, uh, like in any game design where there's someone who does the construction, someone who's decorating, someone who's thinking of the gameplay. Um, you could do peer assessment, of course, because it's all shared. You could play other games and give feedback that way. You could seek feedback from across the world. Um, a demonstrating an understanding of a concept, video storytelling, even, you know, it's not even making a game, but you are playing the game to make the video. So how does the pricing work? Well, it's not like Minecraft, where you can use this on pretty much any device. It does need some niche equipment. So when I last checked on Price Spy, a PS3 controller, a console is about $350. Um, controllers range from off-market off stuff to the actual Sony stuff. Um, you can buy those on Trade Me as well. LBP2, the game, $25 if you download it. You can buy them secondhand on Trade Me for like 10 bucks. Same for LBP3. PS4 is a little bit more expensive, it's a bit newer. So that's the cheapest console I could find. Um, there are controllers a little bit more pricey. The game is just a, a tad more pricey, but this Trade Me. You can download it, buy physical. And so you need, really need to think about if you were going to do this, you know, what is the budget? because you also need a screen for the PlayStation. So there's a few things to think about, but I thought you might like to see that if, you want, if you're thinking about exploring that. And so at this point, I'm going to need a volunteer. And we're going to create a little bit of stuff. So come up now if you want to do that volunteering with me. We're going to do a, create a little bit of a game. I'm going to record my audio, and then the, the PlayStation will create a video of this gameplay, and I'll attach it to this presentation at the end. So we've got over here. Yep, come up, come up. I hope this works. OK, cool. So I'm going to wear this headset to take my audio into the video. And sadly, this, we couldn't get the audio from the PlayStation 4 out. So just imagine lots of sound effects and plinking and plonking noises and whooshing. So what's your name? Bob. Bob. Hi, Bob, Stephen. Awesome. There you go. There's your controller. Okay. Um, and we just switch over. I'm not sure if we're going to see it here if we have to watch the screen. But we'll have a look. Okay, have you played Little Big Planet before? No. Okay, this is good. You're going to learn something. Hopefully. Yeah, so just a quick intro for you. This is move, mm -hmm. um, jump, grab, and square is going to open your menu system, okay. the pop-it. And so in this gameplay, I've got a little platform. We're going to run across this platform. There's going to be a lethal penalty if you don't survive. And what I'm going to get you to do, Bob, is create a round ball of sponge, which we're going to put a rotating motor on. Okay. And we're going to trigger that to work in a certain situation. And then we'll get that going with some logic. Okay. And if it doesn't work, if the player can't manage that little game, they get penalized by being electrocuted, which should be exciting. In the game. In the game. Not you, Bob. No, you're going to be safe. <laughs> Are there any questions while we're waiting that you want to ask about any of this before you see the gameplay? Oh, we can see a little screen down here. But. Fingers crossed. I could have done some photos of, for this, but you really need to see it in action to appreciate it. So please work. 
I understand the issue is to do with HDMI and the kind of signal that it can output. Um, while we're waiting, when you're playing Little Big Planet 2, you, the controller animates the head, so you can use the controller to move to animate the head to look around. The directional buttons allow, allow the player to express emotions. So I think up has expressed three levels of happiness, down is three levels of sadness. I think right makes the character more angry, and left is sadness. So if you don't have a way to communicate with text or voice, you can do a bit of expression in the game to show what you're thinking or feeling. Not looking good, no, okay. <laughs> Mara, we might get you earlier than we thought. Well, Bob and I could just play and watch this yeah, little screen. If you can imagine what we're doing, <laughs> we'll, just, and we'll just narrate it for you. I'm yeah. jumping, I'm so jumping. Bob's jumping. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of color. Looks good. Yeah, it looks good. Bob likes it. <laughs> yeah. In fact, we could animate it, and these guys could be the characters, and they could, they could do it for us. Yeah, so Dan, I want you to get some sponge and dra drag a line of sponge and make it hang in the air for us. <laughs> yeah. Do we pull the pin on that? Okay. Oh, well, that's a shame. Thank you, Bob. Thank you very much. Give Bob a big round of applause. He's worked very hard. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll go home and play this in my own time. Uh, I'll take the bullet for that, and then I'll download a video that's a part of the slideshow. And you can just see a bit of how the coding works and how the graphical menu works, because there's almost no need. To, you don't need to code anything. It's all compiled in the background. It's simply a matter of dragging icons around, dragging a wire to this place, and so on. So, yeah, sorry I couldn't show you any of that. Um, but do see me afterwards if you have any more questions. So... Kia ora everyone, thank you.